G'day YouTube. This is just a quick rundown of the latest CentOS release, which is version 7.2, just come out uh, in the last few days or so. Now, starting off, just to get into the philosophy or a bit of a background of CentOS, the uh, the CentOS project actually is uh, builds on an enterprise class distribution based on source code from Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as some of you may know. The so the typical usage of uh, CentOS is, uh, well, it's actually uh, very popular for use in server environments, but uh, people also sometimes use it as a full-blown desktop distribution as well. In fact, I did uh, many, many a year ago. It's, uh, it's a distro that's actually quite common in enterprise environments as well as you might expect. Uh, if you work anywhere in a Linux environment or any IT environment, and you see Linux in the area, it's it's most likely or at least sometimes going to be CentOS. Moving on, we've got the GNOME desktop environment, as you might be able to see here. We can punch up that HUD menu there, the hub menu. Uh, so the GNOME desktop environment is sort of the de facto standard for CentOS, uh, th but that's a lot of the time, but that's not always the case. Uh, but that's something I'll get into uh, more a little bit later or in just a hot second anyway. The file manager is also GNOME inspired or GNOME related, so it should be called file or files, GNOME files. Let's see, so it's just, they just call it files, but uh, it's really called GNOME files, which is the, the standard file manager used in uh, the GNOME desktop environment, and it's pretty simple, pretty, pretty straightforward to use as well. Uh, the kernel should be, uh, I don't think it's actually reached 4.0 yet, it should be 3.10 or something, so what I'll do is I'll just uh, go over to a terminal and see if I can find the kernel number, which is, there we go, 3.10. So not quite the 4.2 release that's uh, the latest and greatest for Linux at the moment, but that's something you'd also expect from a, a distribution like this one that really maintains or deals with uh, server environments and needs to be stable. Okay, cool. So let's see what else. Uh, architectures. So uh, with the architecture, you'll find that we've only got, uh, well, CentOS only releases the 64-bit architecture. So if you're hoping to or expecting to use this on a old laptop or old PC of yours, you're shipwrecked out of luck because it's only going to run on the 64-bit yeah, environments these days. Uh, regarding some of the software, there's a... Uh, not a great deal, but I'll just show you. So if we would go to internet applications, oh, just Firefox there. Uh, we've got LibreOffice. Uh, that would be version 4 as well, not the Bleeding Edge version 5, but that only came out somewhat recently anyway. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. But I will show you guys something in particular. When I went to install CentOS earlier, I took a screenshot and I found that uh, there's actually a lot of different things that you can install. So I selected the sort of the more default GNOME desktop environment, but you can go a minimum install, which uh, reminds me of a Windows Server environment, which, which only has the, the core terminal environment. You can also use KDE, but uh, I probably wouldn't recommend that, but you know, whatever works for you guys, whatever you prefer. I don't think I've ever really seen people use KDE with uh, CentOS before, but uh, you know, it's a little bit more resource heavy. But most people do tend to stick to the GNOME desktop. And once I did uh, actually select on GNOME desktop, I had to select anything else I wanted, including the Office Suite, Internet Applications, which I've showed you, not too many, and just a bunch of uh, GNOME applications here and there, as we've seen left and right. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, there's actually a not, not a great deal of changes since the previous release. Uh, it's mostly minor changes, uh, bug fixes and security updates, things like that. And, uh, and yeah, and that's, that's about it. I might also mention that uh, the update method is yum, so you would do uh, sudo or su yum install to install a package. And the package manager itself is the RPM package manager, as you might expect from Real or similar to Fedora as well. So overall, it's a it's a solid it's a really decent, solid, stable, customizable, and popular distribution um, to be reckoned with. I suppose it's uh, something that I used as my personal desktop environment many years ago, and uh, as I mentioned before, and it does sort of stay true to its roots. If you just have a look at it here, you've got the old looking uh, GNOME 
uh, desktop sort of environment, which is cool. But that's that's more of a, a GNOME desktop environment as opposed to a sent specific thing, sent to a specific uh, change there. But all in all, yeah, pretty cool. Um, yeah, feel free to use it as a yeah as a server. That's that's what most people are going for with this. But uh, cheers, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and yeah, I hope that this is um, yeah been of some interest to you. Cheers.